Hey guys, Jacob with Jacob Comics. Alright, we have a really fun episode. We're going to be reviewing Red Goblin number one. The new title with Normie Osborne and his new symbiote. And uh, before we get dived into that, I do want to let you guys know about the 600 subscriber giveaway. When we hit 600 subscribers, we'll be giving this book away. It's a Marvel number one variant. All you have to do is like the video, comment down below, and be subscribed to the channel. That will give you a chance to win. And when we hit 600 subscribers, we will raffle the book off and somebody's going to win it. Alright guys, let's get dived into Red Goblin number one. Now, as always, we're going to be going heavy into spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled for the issue, that's your warning. Next up, we always shout out the creative team because without the creative team, we wouldn't have a comic book, right guys? So on Red Goblin number one, we have Alex Pacnadel is the writer. The artist is Jan Bazaldua. Colors by David Curio. Letters by Joe Caramagna. And the cover by Inhyuk Lee. Uh, now there is a foreword, and since it's a brand new character, I'll go ahead and read that so we can all kind of get an idea of who, who this is, right? It says, uh, Normie Osborne is the son of Harry Osborn and Liz Allen, and grandson of the Green Goblin, Norman Osborn. Since before Normie's birth, his family has been ensnared in the web of Spider-Man and his superheroics. That's as true now as it ever has been. And recently, the love, lust, and lies that have connected Spider-Man and the Osborns for so long cost Harry his life and Normie his father, though neither Normie nor his mother are aware of the exact circumstances of Harry's passing. Normie's involvement in superpowered intrigue has grown even more complicated than that. After a brief rivalry, he has developed something of a friendship with Dylan Brock, the current host to the Venom symbiote and son of the original Venom, Eddie Brock, who himself has gone missing. In the wake of Madeline Pryor and Ben Riley's attempt to cast all of New York under a dark web, Dylan is more determined than ever to find his father and, in need of allies, gave Normie a tiny piece of an alien symbiote, creating a new and terrifying vision of the Red Goblin. And we start in Normie's mind, and he's thinking, family can be like quicksand. The harder you struggle to escape, the deeper you sink. My grandpa Norman used to be the Green Goblin, an S-tier super creep with a higher body count than cigarettes. Our parents did what they could to protect me and my half-brother Stanley from the chaos, but it was hopeless. Legacies are echoes that somehow only grow louder. Case in point, when Norman bonded with the Carnage symbiote, he brought little Normie, that's me, along for the ride as his freaky sidekick. The goblin child. Messed up, huh? Norman got better, but then my dad died, which we don't need to talk about. But hey, shock, twist, my friend Dylan is the new Venom, and a little while ago he gave me a symbiote of my very own. I call him Rascal. So here I am, treading quicksand, trying to crawl out from under that Osborne name. Not easy when you've got a crazy, violent symbiote in your back pocket, but I'm trying. And so we see that he runs into the Goblin Nation, finds out that the Goblin Nation is still a thing, and uh, he's going to superhero and, and uh, put on the Red Goblin, you know, Red Goblin and, and go to town on him. Unfortunately, he kind of loses control of the symbiote, and the symbiote goes uh, a little farther than, you know, he, he wanted to go. He just wanted to uh, beat the guys up and get them arrested or something. And he, he starts really, really hammering people it, people down, right? And uh, then he smells some chocolate, and so breaks into a store and eats all the chocolate, right? And uh, then we see that uh, while, uh, while he's kind of eating all the chocolate, uh, one, of the gold, one of the goblin army guys comes and, and gets him with a, a firebomb. A pumpkin bomb and so you know they don't like fire I'm guessing it kind of knocks them unconscious because we get this uh, 
tragic kind of backstory here of of uh, Normie having lost his father and he's got this younger brother that's almost too young to really even understand and he, he wants to care for him and his mom is is lost without without uh you know with this recent death and everything she's she's still pretty uh pretty emotionally broken and um we we kind of see uh this uh harder version of normie where um you know he's told by norman that that his father's dead and, and he says we were gonna build a destroy mode unicorn gundam over the holidays almost 18 inches i better go return it to the store before they close and norman says normie and uh that's kind of cut off by uh normie saying rascal are you poking around in my memories again i told you they're private they're mine for the last time stay out of my head when i'm sleeping and uh so as i was hoping we do get some some arguments between those two and their uh uh now then you know we do get that he's he's been uh you know kind of sleeping it off and he gets arrested by the police and the police you know they find out who he is and uh norman comes to pick him up and norman is not all too happy about this and tells him as much you know what i'm saying and uh there's kind of this interesting um where normie sort of in is he he has a chance to give a mean retort uh but he but he doesn't and he spares his grandfather um and he says no be kind you know i need to be kinder um and then we get uh the bad guy who's leading the the goblin army here and uh he he's really cruel one of the goblin army guys questions him and he literally just breaks the guy's neck <laughs> And then everyone's listening to him after that, you know. Um, and then we get this great interaction between Normie and uh, and Rascal, this new symbiote. And Rascal is kind of like a very, very young symbiote. He refers to him as sort of like a puppy dog that's still learning. And uh, he wants to go with him. His speech and vocabulary is very limited. He just wants to go. Normie has to go to this party. Um, he's been grounded for eons, apparently, <laughs> jokingly, uh, for, you know, breaking into this store. But he's still going to go to this uh, speech that his grandfather's giving uh, about about Harry Osborne, about his father. So then we kind of fast forward to that speech ha uh, taking place, and Normie's there. Uh, he ended up deciding to leave rascal at home um like you know bad boy you turned into a uh you turned mad and i couldn't control you basically <laughs> and uh you know you were too mean to people so you have to stay home um but unfortunately that's when the goblin people come to attack and they end up capturing norman and uh and taking Norman off with them. And then, you know, unfortunately, Normie doesn't have the Red Goblin. He's he's kind of sad that he'd left it at home, right? And uh, after a while of fighting, Norman's pretty, pretty stiff, but he eventually gets taken captive, right? And at the end here, we get the reveal of, of who the villain was earlier. And it's actually... Uh, Phil Urich, the original Goblin King, um, looking like a zombie, <laughs> man does not look good. He is definitely, he's definitely my, maybe not alive. And Norman's like, I thought, I thought you died, you know. Um, so that's Red Goblin number one. My thoughts are, um, I really liked everything, I really liked everything, uh, that was that was focused on uh this interaction between normie and rascal i was enjoying that that's a lot of fun 
Um, you know, it's the first issue. They're opening up a lot of different plot threads. They're trying to introduce us to, uh, you know, a more in-depth uh, uh, normie. So, you know, I'm, I'm I'm saying bring it on. I'm excited for issue two. I had fun with this. It, it um, you know, it didn't like knock it out of the ballpark like I'm raving reviews or anything. But it's a good start. It's a good start. I'm I'm interested. I'm curious. I want to see where it's going. Um, it's sort of you know I haven't read anything by Pac Nadell before, but it sort of had a, a Ram V kind of a feel where uh, we were laying a lot of different plot threads that that I feel are gonna are gonna pan out later on, um, such as Rascal seeing into. Uh, or, you know what I'm saying, being able to see Normie's memories and uh, what will Rascal think of those memories and will, will that allow Normie to maybe be able to come to grips with some of them, which it, you know, it seems like at this point he's definitely struggling to find himself. And uh, that can be an interesting story and uh, I'm having fun with it, I'm on board. I'm gonna pick up issue two. So yeah, Red Goblin 1 gets a thumbs up. That's what I have today, guys. Remember, if you like this kind of content, like, comment, and be subscribed to the channel. Uh, helps the YouTube algorithm so it knows people like me and it'll send me off to more people so more people can come talk about comics with us. All right, guys, we'll see you next time and have a great day.